morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another interview with the Schooner Morning Show here. I'm your host, Mark Crevo, and I am with Mr. Roger Bouvier up in apartment 523, right? 523 in the Rockport building. So, Roger, yeah. nice to have you on board. Thank you for agreeing to come down for an interview. Thank you. Yeah, it's a nice setting, isn't it? It is beautiful. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a makeshift uh, set, like on a TV show. Well, it's a pretty nice set, yeah. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. So, Roger, tell us, where were you born? Uh, born in Lewiston. In Lewiston, Maine. In Lewiston, Maine. But I uh, didn't hang around very long because uh, when I was 13, I won a scholarship uh, and I uh, went to a prep school in uh, Massachusetts in Worcester, Assumption yeah. Prep School. Yeah. And the four years did my high school, and then I did the four years of college at, at the same place. They have a college too. Yes, yes. And today they have a brand new college, gorgeous. But in any event, it kept going, and that was the uh, Korean War time. So I did my two years in, in the service in El Paso, Texas. I, ne I never had heard of El Paso, Texas. So right. And had, uh, had some uh, adventures over there and so forth. And, <laughs> and, and, and it's still there. It's a big, big hospital, which uh, they made me the entertainment director of all things. You're kidding. It, you had my job. Honest, honest to God. It's, <laughs> it's in my veterans papers. I it's, never knew that till recently. That is amazing. So forth, which, yeah. uh, which uh, meant that uh, they tried to do some entertainment for the patients. There was a, across the road, there's a Fort the Dix, I think it was, uh, 9,000 soldiers over there. Wow. With families and everything. Yeah. So the hospital was built to take care of them. Sure. But then, because it was the Korean War, they started bringing in the wounded. Oh, boy. Uh, fellas. Yeah. So it got more important to do. And uh, so it was a, had a big gym to take care of with a, a uh, big stage and so forth, and the USO troops would come in. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that was very popular uh, with shows uh, in the gym where we put, uh, put up somewhat like we you do here. Yes. With the chairs and everything. Yeah. Those that could walk. I am amazed that that was your job in the in the service. Uh, I am amazed that, uh, by that. But it didn't include only that. It included the bullfighting and. Uh, the rodeos and uh, and uh, wow. taking patients and all these things. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, and the uh, rodeos and the uh, high school football, college football, and so it, uh, it was about you know seven days a week. To, and and then the uh, the the uh, the U.S. Uh, the sh uh, shoes that uh, that wanted to, to come, they all wanted to go to Juarez, Mexico. Which is right across, right across the border. Yeah, right across the border. Yeah, and uh, boy, did I had had some nights over there waiting for them. I, I think would take them over for a bus, and they wouldn't come back. So me and the driver would actually take a nap over there. I went over there so many times. No and, kidding. Uh, so, so they went over to probably buy yeah, goods so and stuff a, like so that, eat was, Mexican it, food. It was a, a very interesting time. Then yeah, I, uh, just to keep going very quickly. Uh, I uh, wanted to get my master's degree. Yeah. And I was accepted at the New York University. And that's where it really starts in New York City. Yeah. So uh, I, wanna, I went to New York City, didn't know where the hell I was, I was going <laughs> to uh, stay. I, I'm serious. Oh, I believe it. New York's and not an I, easy uh, place. I, I got a room at the uh, YMCA at uh, West 23rd Street. But in any event, and I got a job. Uh, at a big insurance company, which was actually right on Wall Street. Wow. So for a kid from Lewiston to be working yeah. on Wall Street. Oh, 49 yeah. 49 Wall Street. And uh, I think about it now because uh, they bring my lunch now to the apartment, like a lot of people, and part of your employment uh, was a free lunch on the 37th floor that they would we would have our, our table and so forth. And yeah. Uh, fill out uh, a menu and so forth. So it was, it was very, not quite as fancy as over here, but it was a nice, Well, it was free. I would think that 
by the time you left the 37th floor, yep. got down into the busy streets of New York, found something was, to eat, I was down in ate, the, and go back. You can't do that in an down hour. To, down to Wall Street. But, sure. Uh, but I went there to go to school, and by total coincidence, if you walk up from where I was on Wall Street, uh, you cross Broadway, where Wall Street ends. Yeah. And I would walk there, and there was a school for New York University. And the reason it was there was... Uh, it, Nobody stayed there. It was only courses that started at seven o'clock at night, for an hour. So I did my uh, eight to five job. Then I'd go or walk over there, and had depending on the classes I had, and I did it for two and a half years. I uh, at the at the New York University, and I finally got my MBA, and so forth. And then, uh, of course, uh, New York in those days was very very interesting. And uh, I eventually met the girl that I at the ma that I married some a few years later. But uh, she was working at the big insurance company. I moved on to a f right in the financial district. But uh, that's where I really got some experience with uh, commercial insurance. Right, big yeah. properties. Uh, yeah, I was the assistant to one of the big brokers, and uh, that was very interesting because they had a, a very very interesting. Uh, accounts and so forth and uh, just, just as a, an, an aside one of the accounts was flexies and my job as an assistant I would have to go and uh, get the what's your inventory and this and that but the flexies you don't know what that was but it was sold to Victoria's Secret ah ladies on the way well, the, 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 my story is that when, when you went to the office, you walked down the hallway, and on your left, there was a little theater, like you have upstairs over here, with yeah. nice, nice big sets. Yeah. And these guys were sitting there smoking their big cigars, because they were the buyers. Yeah. You know, they would buy uh, ladies' underwear. Sure, sure. So, but they, the ladies would parade on, on a little stage. Oh, back my and forth. goodness. So I didn't mind going to that. <laughs> Truth, truth what story. a job. What a job these buyers yeah, had to sit there and smoke cigarettes and <laughs> look at that. That's yeah. amazing. Anyway, uh, make a long story short, I, I did get quite a bit of experience and so forth. And uh, as I say, we were uh, thinking about getting married. And, uh, and uh, what we used to do is uh, I, I worked in a financial district and uh, I'm leading on to something here. I would meet uh, my wife, uh, my my wife to be fiance and so on yeah. Friday nights yeah. and in the financial district and we'd we'd have a big uh, fried clam dinner at Howard Johnson's. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, what you I, think I, of when you think of your a, a big a big clam dinner. Yeah. Uh, taking a movie and then uh, she lived in in, uh, in Greenwich Village, which on a Friday night was magical. It truly was. Uh, people all over the place, uh, bars, and so we, so after the movie, we would meet to have a, a we'd go to a, a stop at a, a bar for, for a drink. Yeah. And we did one time, and uh, uh, what, what do they call it? Uh, Stonewall Inn is what it was. Yeah. And uh, so we had a, a drink, then I'd walk her back to her apartment. She lived in, in it was some other girls in there. Greenwich Village, and I'd take the subway to Brooklyn Heights. Yeah. But uh, Stonewall Inn, uh, most people don't know, but that became very famous. When we went, it was a regular bar, and I asked the, uh, the bartender, I said, you got a big room in the back there with an old piano. I said, you ever rent it out? He says, yeah. He said, why? I said, well, we're looking for a small place for, for a wedding reception. He says, oh, yeah, that's what they use it for. I, I said, how much? He said, $65. Honest to God, $65. Come on, $65. So I took when off. was this, in the 1700s? That was in, <laughs> well, that was in 19, uh, 1963. That is amazing so, to me. Uh, yeah. So, so eventually we, we did get married in New York and had the, had the uh, reception there. And the point I'm making is that it became a, a, a place where the gay movement was getting very big in oh, New York, boy. and the policeman was trying to stop it. Yeah. But one, about four or five years after we had our wedding reception, I think we were back in Maine in those days, 
uh, there was a big riot and there were like two, two couple thousand people, all the gays of, had, had a, at a big meeting, yeah, and, and the and the uh, New York police gave up, yeah. And several years later, we were back in Maine, and those that uh, President Obama named it as a national monument. Oh, a historic landmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, yeah. at the Stonewall Inn. Isn't that and something? If you want to look at it, just just Google still Stonewall Inn. Now I wonder if that's where the term Stonewalling came from. No, no, uh, no. It was known as the Stonewall yeah. Inn yeah. When, when we went there. Right, right. Which wasn't the gay bar. Yeah, there. but yeah. The point I'm making is that we became famous. Yeah, for having your reception there. Getting again. phone calls. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Friends and relatives, you, you, you guys are famous now, so you're damn right. We That's are. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. But anyway, and so then, you moved on after... And, I, and then uh, uh, the Dunlap Agency, which is uh, the big building which yes. is where, where uh, the, the bank is today. Uh, yeah. They re they recruited me to come back to, to Maine, and uh, and we wanted to come back. Anyway, yeah. My, yeah. my wife was from Massachusetts, and we did. Yeah. So I worked 24 years for the Dunlap Agency, which uh, was... Very, very exciting. Yeah. At our own plane. Wow. Twin engine plane with sure. a bar on it and everything. We did a lot of business up in up in uh, Rooster County. And I was there quite a bit flying up there. We had our own plane. We would have a professional pilot and so forth. That's so amazing. Was, we did home. you like Rooster County? I love Rooster County. Oh, yeah, yeah. We spent some, it, some good days and bad days to oh. You talked to... Folks over here talking about getting cold weather out there. Well, it was, oh, yeah. I've been up there when it was 30 below. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. On, they, on business yeah. and so forth. So. Yeah. So, uh, how do the people in Canada do it? I mean, that's Canada's southern uh, border. They're used to And it's our northern border that freezes. Used to it over there. They, Canada, yeah, you, so you I, look on the other side of the border <laughs> and it's packed with people. Yeah. And then for us, there's nobody up there. That, that's right. So, anyway, uh, just a little bit more. Uh, so uh, I couldn't, and my wife worked at Bates College, and, oh. and when we came back, uh, yeah. the first financial aid officer they had. Yeah. But uh, so we were uh, we were settled in in Maine. Yeah. And uh, I worked about twenty four years for Dunlap, but then uh, uh, I moved over to to Unum, the big life insurance company. Yes. Uh, they, yeah. They needed. Uh, a, I got to take the the place of a lady over there as what they call the risk manager uh, that was uh, insuring all of the all of the assets uh, that uh, um, the insurance company had Unum and it was a big deal because it's in Portland when you go by this oh yeah the, the uh, turnpike you see the big glass building yes there's six other buildings right behind that wow and they're all multi-million dollar buildings so well, that was interesting, and in addition to that, their uh, the way they used to invest their money was in in properties, beautiful properties all around the country. But I had about ninety five of them from, and not one. I never knew why. Not they had ninety about ninety five, and not one in New England. I don't know why, but uh, they were in uh, in Houston, in Florida. In uh, in California and so forth. So, so that was interesting for an insurance guy. To, th th these were twenty five million dollar buildings. Oh, I'm not God. kidding you. They, now they, this is where they invested their profits. You mean? Yeah, their profits. It, yeah. So they they the money they made they invested in real estate. Yeah, to, in real estate. Yeah. And uh, and I stayed there till uh, there was a, a was supposed to be a merger with an, another insurance company, but it, but frankly. A, a takeover. Yeah. By that time, uh, I retired. So, and uh, so here I am at school. Boy, oh boy! So it's, it's been quite, quite, quite a amazing. Quite, quite, quite a ride. Now, did you and your wife have any children? No, we never had. Never any had children. children. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people that have chosen not to and, do that. Uh, and uh, she was busy. I was busy. Yeah. Uh, and so, at, uh, as I say. Uh, uh, I took care of my mother and my sister and yeah. this and that. And yeah. one time uh, after my sister passed away, she was the last one in in the family to pass away. I, just, I went back to the condo and I said to myself, if I don't do this, I'm never going to do it. You know? yeah. And yeah. I, I had had a, a, a tour here. Yeah. Dave Cassidy had given me a tour 
and uh, so forth. So I said, damn it, if, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. Right. So I did it, and here I am. Boy, I think that's fantastic. So, but it was, what a fantastic... And, and it's good to be around other people, you know? Yeah. I mean, I just... I can't imagine living alone in a home today. I just yeah. wouldn't want to do that, well, you know? Well, you know, uh, uh, they say, uh, well, you know, I have a lot of friends, and yeah. and they, but the only relatives I have now is uh, my nephew and his family in uh, Exeter, New Hampshire. Yeah. And they call me, and they would be here. They'd been here, but sure. uh, without visitors and so forth. So. Right, with the COVID. Yeah. COVID so, but, you know, that's getting better. Like I say, we're getting closer and closer to yeah, so, getting vaccinated and... And you know, uh, so it's things been, will uh, it's been a, an interesting uh, ride. Boy, uh, I'll say, very, up, very interesting. Up to my uh, 89th birthday uh, on December 23rd. It was. It was just past. Well, it happy birthday! Birth. That's fantastic. And, and, uh, I'm amazed. And the. Uh, uh, you guys came in with a big birthday cake. The girls came yeah, in at, yeah. at lunchtime and yeah, sang happy yeah. birthday, Roger, <laughs> and a big cake and everything. So, Isn't that fun, though? It's fun. Yeah. yeah you it, know? Uh, no, it, uh, it's been interesting so forth. Well, Roger, I mean, you have had a very interesting life and in living in New York City. I mean, you should talk to Cornelia Bow a little bit. Because she lived in New York yes, City yes, as well. Yes, we talked about it. And yeah, and she also was at the YWCA, I think, is yeah. where she lived to start. And that's funny, that's where you were the YMCA. Well, I, yeah, I yeah. in the other place. And, right, uh, so, right. So they, and then uh, you could rent a room yeah, at those places. Talked about, about, uh, oh, that's great, that's great to hear. Too. Well, before we go, what is there any hobbies or things that interest you or things that other you might want your friends and neighbors here at Schooner to know about? Do you well, have any... Uh, Interest well, or hobbies? Probably, or? Well, um, all my friends and, and what family I've got left, they know about uh, what I uh, did, you know, in college. Sure. You know, getting the MBA the degree and so forth, and, and uh, New York. And, yeah. You know, it yeah. was very interesting in those days to live in New York. Yeah. We saw everything that was free. Yeah. Museums and this. And yeah, that yeah. And so forth. There's a lot. I don't think it's... Too much uh, this uh, now, but you were talking about fifty years ago. Sure, sure. Uh, it was very interesting. Yeah, and uh, so there is a lot to see and do in New York, and not all of it costs a lot of money, uh, like you by say. The way, yeah. all free. Yeah, all free. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, and, yeah. So we had a, we had a, a good life, put it that way. Excellent. So I'm still hanging on. Excellent, and doing great at it too. Well, glad to hear about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Another uh, history of, of someone's life uh, up to this point of living at Schooner Estates. Very, very interesting. Can't thank you enough, Roger, for coming in today. Sorry about the wait, oh, but uh, no problem. everything worked out very well. This has been The Morning Show here at Schooner Estates. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 10.05. Until we meet again. Oh, I'm trying to do the Johnny Carson thing. I'm no good at it.